Hi, I'm uh, Andre. I'm a tech enthusiast and a software developer at uh, Cegeca. And thank you for joining this talk. Today we will be speaking about uh, running WebAssembly on a server and uh, how .NET uh, fits into that, what are some of the developments within the .NET community in this respect, and why would we run a code within WebAssembly. Asking uh, why is always uh, important. So what we can expect, uh, some definition about what is WASM and WASI, uh, how .NET fits in the context, a uh, nice uh, library, experimental library uh, called .NET Isolator, with which we can uh, run .NET within WASI. And what are the development uh, in uh, cloud computing regarding uh, WASM? And hopefully by the end we will be much smarter. So let's start with what is WebAssembly. It's a, a binary instruction format, so it's an instruction format that can be executed by a virtual machine or a, a runtime. We already know that's a runtime in the browser, right? Because WebAssembly can be executed in the browser. But the idea is that the development is now to run also outside of the browser, right? So all this, this code is, uh, is sandboxed within this, uh, this VM. You cannot execute stuff outside of uh, the VM. That's because uh, in the browser, uh, it executes arbitrary code, right? So we want to make sure that uh, that code doesn't do random stuff uh, outside of the VM. So that's implicit. All it can do is execute uh, operation on its own memory space. Uh, besides that, it uh, adds, has a functionality to import export functions so you can uh, from the host environment so you can import function from the host environment sort of like callback hooks to uh, respond to certain events from the host and to uh, export functions so that the host environment can call into your code but it would be nice to have like a standard of these import exports right because if we execute let's say on an operating system, we want to access the disk or access the network card, etc. So we want to, to standardize this. And that's what WASI is, it's WebAssembly System Interface, defines this set of standard imports, uh, working with file system, with sockets, etc. It's still sandbox, so we cannot al uh, it's not allowed by default to, to do anything. Also, the, the host controls what is the access on, on accessing file system or clock or etc. Um, so the, the host can opt in for this stuff. And it's totally independent for, from the browser, yeah, because that's the idea. It's not dependent on JavaScript or any, any sort of web APIs. One way to, uh, to think about uh, WebAssembly is like um, uh, application binary interface. So sort of like a contract between a host and your code. Uh, the, co the host can be any like a cloud service or, or a Kubernetes or just an app service that you have running in Azure. Uh, can be an IoT device running at the edge of the cloud or uh, or a mobile app, etc., a Windows app, anything really. And yeah, your code is your code compiled to WASM. It can be any programming language that is compilable to WASM, because WASM or WebAssembly, the same thing. Um, is is also a compilation target for various programming language languages like C++, uh, C Sharp, Java, Go, Rust. These are favorites. And why would we? Yeah, why would we run things in WASI? Why why make our our life more complicated? Why not just is deploy software and run it as, as it is. <clears throat> so
So let's see some, some advantages. Uh, running within WASI is, is fully sandboxed uh, by default. So if something bad happens, like a, a crash or some security vulnerability, that uh, blast radius is contained within the WebAssembly instance. Um, also, the security is, is capability-based, so access to disk, network, uh, and even beyond it goes to, you can control the, how many CPU cycles that code is allowed to run, or how much memory you use it. So it's really, really granular in this aspect. Um, and you don't need some sort of custom build toolchain, you just d deploy a single file, and that, that's it from the host. From your code, it's, you can de uh, develop in any programming language, in any system architecture. It's AOT compiled or JIT compiled, so it's really almost near native speed, and it's quite lightweight. So if you, we can go with this, uh, many people make comparison with this with Docker or with containerization in general. How does this fit into it? Well, if we compare this with Docker, it's more lightweight because it doesn't uh, virtualize any operating system. So it's just um, a binary that's executing and communicates with the operating system via the system interface, the WASI. Uh, it's uh, up to 50% quicker in execution compared to, to Docker. So it's really like the lightweight version of of containerization. If we think that Docker is middleweight and like VMs is, would be lightweight, uh, would be heavyweight, sorry. Okay, so uh, how does .NET fit to, into this, uh, this picture? So this is um, what we see here, it's l like how we have now with Blazor. Because you might ask me now, okay, but we have Blazor, why it's problem solved, right? We can have Blazor and we have a WASM file and we can just execute that. Everything is okay already. But actually it's not really like this because uh, w Blazor is made, is tailor-made for the browser. So it was de de developed with the uh, running within that runtime that it is in the browser. So it's highly coupled with um, JavaScript. It's um, compiled to, to WebAssembly. Actually, it's uh, the entire runtime or the entire C-sharp runtime is not just your code. It's the entire .NET runtime, a, a mono version of it is uh, compiled to WASM and your code just executes like uh, DLLs within that uh, runtime. And all the interaction with the outside world, so with the browser, with like calling network or stuff like this, is done via, you guessed it, with JavaScript, because that's what, that's what we have there. But the idea is that we want to uh, be WASI compliant, to execute everywhere. So we uh, deploy uh, as a WASM module and we interact with uh, operating like uh, operating system uh, f like features like uh, files or network using the system interface that we talk about and for that is a library called WASI SDK that's now in uh, let's say in uh, preview state it's really at the beginning. So we want to execute .NET within uh, WebAssembly let's see a bit about uh, that and then there's this guy. Okay, the, I agree, the photo doesn't make him too much justice, but uh, he's really uh, pivotal in everything related to WebAssembly and .NET. So he's the man behind Blazor. Uh, Blazor United had a very, very cool project which combines uh, SPA and uh, deployment without files, uh, static files and also server, Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly. You should definitely, if you're into Blazor, Blazor United will be the next thing, I think. I, they also want to put it in .NET 8, I understand. The WASI SDK that we just uh, talked about, and this thing, the .NET isolator that we will uh, see in a second. 
So how does this work? Um, so we can run .NET within WebAssembly. We just talked about this. But we can also uh, run a WebAssembly within .NET. So there is this uh, runtime called Wasm time, which is a standalone portable runtime with which we can load WebAssembly inside .NET. So this leads to an interesting thought experiment, right? Uh, what if we run .NET within WebAssembly within .NET? So sort of like uh, Inception style. So, and we can also have multiple runtimes. Um, I'm going to switch to the code to show you an, an example. Okay. So this is a light team. You'll bear with me. Uh, I'll make this sacrifice. I'll switch it over later. So we will uh, see now. Um, yeah, I'm going to just go through the code. I'll put directly this example. So what we have here is uh, just a function. Uh, yeah, it, this is a console application, standard console application. And it's just logging uh, the environment info showing the system architecture, taking the uh, current directory and going through all the files and writing them to the, to the console window. But we, we do this from, the, from Windows in my example, right? And then we use uh, this library called .NET Isolator. It's in preview state. And yeah, it's dependent on wasn't time, as, as we discussed, to, in order to load the .NET um, WASM module. And then we have this thing called isolator, uh, isolated host, uh, and we initiate this. This will start up uh, WASM time, and it's, it's providing a configuration. Because by default, it doesn't have a file system. WebAssembly doesn't have a file system. And you need to specify it. And we specify it here with pre-open directly. And I just have this uh, folder where uh, I have a few files. Uh, I have a bunch of images and then the docx file. So that's, that's only what, what it can see and what it can access. And then we have a runtime based on this host. And we can invoke methods on this runtime. And we invoke that log environment info stuff. So let's see what, what happens if we run this. OK, this is first part is the Windows. I don't know if you can uh, see the screen. Uh, first part is, is the Windows file. and. Uh, it says I'm running on x64, root directory is C, contains six files, and here are the files. And then it says, says I'm running on WASM, the root directory is slash, and it contains three files, and these are the files that we just, uh, we just saw. So that's kind of a bit how this works. It's uh, in preview, so it's nothing uh, production ready or anything. Uh, um, but it is a nice thing to see where, uh, what can you do with, with .NET and, and WASI. This is a bit uh, how the system works behind the, the scenes, but we will, uh, yeah, we will move forward. It's, uh, it's loading the, the WASM file. And also, it needs access to the to the .NET binary, so it it must load the base class libraries, all the system DLLs, etc., and your code, the the bin folder. So that's what the host does. If you saw, there was a slight delay. It takes like 400 milliseconds to to start up wasn't time, and then it starts a isolated isolated runtime. But this is a really really quick process, so. But this is uh, this is not not a problem, and every, uh, this runtime communicates with the WASM instance, calling methods on it, calling uh, methods inside the .NET assembly that's, let's say, uh, within the WebAssembly module, and it's isolated. 
And all this happens within process, so we don't have separate process for it. Okay, this is a short uh, code. Uh, it's an Azure function that loads a WASM file and calls a method on it. So we can see the uh, Fibonacci WASM. This is actually made in C, and we instantiate it, and we call methods on it. It's really that easy. <coughs> so, let's see what we have in cloud computing regarding WASM. So, we have uh, WASM Cloud, which is a, a project, uh, it's sort of like Kubernetes, but instead of Docker container, a uh, cluster of containers, you have cluster of web uh, WASI powered uh, WASM modules. Uh, then there's there's a lunatic uh, startup which does uh, things for hyperscale and uh, like uh, they have an uh, actor deployment uh, model when you where you deploy many many uh, web assembly modules really lightweight uh, and they represent all the the state within your your application and we have our own microsoft azure which now has a preview for uh, showing uh, t t for adding WASI uh, node pools within the AKS cluster. So you can add, instead of Docker containers, you can uh, have uh, WASM modules. We'll see a little bit about uh, this. So uh, how it, wo it uh, runs um, WASI inside container shims. So container is the uh, the uh, runtime, the container runtime that's within Docker. And they have this thing called shims, which is like a process that runs besides the container process. And uh, you, uh, it starts it first, and then it manages, it manages the lifecycle. So this is a really decoupled approach in, uh, in Kubernetes, which allows to use these shims to or yeah, to make special sh uh, shims that can boot up something else, not necessarily a container, but a WASM module. And somebody did that. It, it's called Run WASI. It's a container shim, especially for WebAssembly. So this is um, this is a nice development. Uh, there's uh, two types of apps that you can run right now in WASM time. Spin and slide, it's called. One, the spin one is from a fermion, and now it's in a, it's in a preview preview only. But this shows that uh, Microsoft is really uh, exploring this space and uh, doing things already in it. Even though perhaps it will take off Wasi as a container uh, um, technology or not, but uh, like Microsoft is making sure that we as .NET developers will be, let's say, at the forefront of it and we can leverage our .NET skills to take advantage of this new development. So, um, even though uh, this is what we've seen so far, we're getting close to the end. Uh, it's still in experimental or in alpha stage. Uh, we can already see that there's a lot of interest in this promising technology, which can help uh, business optimize the usage of resources that they use for their computation. And in these times, uh, I think we, we should be quite aware of the energy consumption that we use. So uh, software and society together are evolving and our tools must, uh, must evolve it with it. So thank you very much. That was the, the presentation. I will leave if you want to take some, uh, uh, some um, a photo with with some some links. Uh, don't know if you have time for questions, but uh, if you want, we you can reach me uh, down the hallway or at the JJK booth. I'll be glad to to chat with you. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference.